Hi everybody, it's Mr. Robeson here, back with statistics. Today we're going to look at another way to organize probabilities and data using Venn diagrams. Then we're going to look at like the difference between Venn diagrams, tree diagrams, and two-way tables. All right, so what's a Venn diagram look like? All right, so a Venn diagram looks kind of like this guy over here. So the ones that we're going to deal with in this class generally have two circles. All right, and each circle is going to stand for one thing. So like the Venn diagram problems will usually involve two things that may be overlapping. In other words, both of them could be true at the same time. Or we can also have a this but not that scenario, which would be the outside part. All right, and we need to look, we could also look for terms like independent because that can tell us how to fill in some different parts of the circles. And we'll go over that more in the next video here. Um, we generally have two types of Venn diagram problems. We want to find what's left over or what's missing, or we want to use independence to find a probability. So most of the ones or all the ones in this video are going to be the what's left over or what's missing section. And if you don't like Venn diagrams, you can always still use a two-way table. All the Venn diagram problems can also be done with a two-way table. I only introduced this because some people like the Venn diagrams more than they like the two-way tables. So let's see, I've already got blue and red here. So let's say this would be like set A and this would be set B. So like this whole thing would be the probability of A and this whole thing the whole circle would be the probability of B, right? This part in here would be the probability of A and B. So it'd be both of them. And this would be not A and not B. This part here would be A, but not B. And this part here would be B, not A. Some people confuse this and they're like, this, this outside part is all a B. No, it's not. It, it includes this inside part too. So we really have four different sections you always have to try and fill in on the Venn diagram problems. So let's look at an example here. So at Garvey High School, 38% of seniors take AP Statistics, 42% of seniors take AP Lit, and 18% of seniors take both classes. What is the probability of randomly selecting a senior who does not take either AP STIT at, or AP LIT? So we do not want either of them. So that means we are looking for the outside area or the outside probability, this section here. So the two things we are talking about are AP STAT and AP LIT. So let's call one of these circles STAT and the other one LIT. Now, when we're filling out Venn diagrams, always, if you can, start in either the middle or the outside. All right, so start from the middle and work your way out, or just start from the outside with that number outside. All right, we can't just put the 38 in this circle because, well, we don't know how it's broken up between these two different parts of the circle, but we know we've got 38% in here. Same with lit. We've got 42% in this red circle, but again, we're not sure how it's split between these two different parts. So I'm putting it on the edge here just to remind us that that's where it goes. 18% take both. So both is the key word here. So that means 18% is in the middle. Well, if 18% is in the middle and we have 38 total here, if we subtract off the 18, that leaves us with 20%. That's in the rest of this part, 18% in here. And for this one, we've got the 42 minus the 18 leaves us with 24% in this part of the circle. So now we have to get to 100% so we can add these up. So we'd have 20 plus 18 plus 24. 18 plus 24 gives us the 42 from before plus the 20 gives us 62. So we've used up 62% in the circle. So to find out what is left over, we could just do 100 minus 62 gives us 38%. So 38% is outside. And that is the answer to our question here. 38%. Now, but some of you are thinking this was kind of confusing. I don't like this at all. That's fine. We can still do this using the two-way table method. So if we're going to use the two-way table method, so we're comparing statistics and literature. So we've got stat, and we have two options there. Yes, we're taking it. No, we're not taking it. And then the other way, we've got lit. And yes, we're taking the AP lit, or no, we're not taking the AP lit. 
So now we're dealing with a percent. So that means we're out of 100% here. All right. And we've got, let's see, 38% take AP statistics. So the total people taking AP stat, the total here would be the 38%. The total people taking AP Lit, so yes for AP Lit would be over here, 42%. And the people taking both classes, that means yes to both of them, are right here, 18%. Now we're just adding and subtracting to find out all the rest of these sections here. Like 42% plus what percent equals 100? Well, I think that's 58. 38% plus what percent equals 100? Well, I think that's 62. All right. 18% plus what percent equals 38%? Well, I think that's 20. 18% plus what percent equals 42%? Well, I think that's 24%. And then to fill in this one here, we could just go across this way. 20 plus what equals 58? Well, that would be 38. Sorry. <laughs> Math is hard. And now I've got all this filled out, I can answer any question I want, just like we did before with two-way tables. So the ones that are not taking either, so we want notice that and no to lit would be the 38% right there. So if it's easier for you to just keep using the tables, keep using the tables. If you like the Venn diagrams, and sometimes they will show up as Venn diagrams on the AP exam, so make sure you do know how to do them, but you can always turn them back into a table if you want. So here's another example. We are doing a taste text between a Coke and Dr. Pepper. We're asking people if they like the taste of each. We've got 200 people that were asked in total. 140 said that they liked Coke. 100 said that they liked Dr. Pepper. 20 said that they liked neither. What's the probability that someone surveyed liked both? All right, so let's take one of these circles and call it Coke. And the other one we'll call it Dr. Pepper, or Dr. P is probably enough here. All right, we've got 200 total. We should have 140 in Coke. We should have 100 in the circle for Dr. Pepper. We have 20 on the outside. I can go ahead and fill that in. That number is definitely going right on there. And now we need to figure out what's going to go in the circles. All right, so this can get tricky. So we need to have 200 minus the 20. So we should have a total of 180 in these two circles. If we have 140 in this circle, so if we subtract the 140, that leaves us with 40 left that should be not in the Coke circle. So that means 40 has to be here, right? 100 minus 40 leaves us with 60 here. 140 minus 60 leaves us with 80 there. And these do add up to the 180 plus the 20 gives us 200. So the ones that like both would be 60, but we want the probability. So it'd be 60 out of everybody, 60 out of 200. All right, now we can also do that using the two-way table. So we're talking about Coke and we can like it, or we can not like it. We're talking about, so let's draw our lines in there. We've also got Dr. Pepper, and we can like that or not like that. So Dr. P, like, not. All right, we've got 200 total. We've got 140 total that said they like Coke, so like Coke, 140. That's the total. We got 100 total that like Dr. Pepper, so like Dr. Pepper, here's 100. 20 said they like neither, so that's 20 for not for both of them. And let's see, we can do the outsides here first, so that leaves us with 100 here, and that leaves us with 60 here, because they got to add up to 200. Um, let's see, 20 plus what equals 100? Well, that'd be 80. 140 plus 8, or 140 minus 80 leaves us with 60 here, and that was actually the answer. And let's see, 40 plus 20 is going to give us the 60, and 60 plus 40 is going to give us the 100. So the ones that like both are right there. So again, it would be the 60 out of 200. So either way works fine. All right, so a survey of all residents in a large apartment complex find that 68% use Facebook, 38% use Instagram, and 25% use both. What is the probability that a person uses Facebook or Instagram? All right, so you can stop it and do it if you need some time. Facebook, Instagram. We got 68% in this circle. We've got 38% in this circle. We've got 25% that use both. That's in here, right there. So to get the outside part, 38 minus 25, 
leaves us with 13% in here. 25% there, that gives us a total of 38. 68 minus the 25. 25, I was right in the four from the 40 that we're gonna get, 43%. And again, 43 plus 25 gets us back to 68. What is the probability that a person uses Facebook or Instagram? Well, that would just be these people, these people, or these people, because they do use either one of them. They use both of them. All right, we could also find the outside number here, but we don't actually need to find it. It's just extra work. So we've got the 23, or sorry, the 43, the 25, and the 13, which is 68 plus 13, 71, 81. 81%, which is 0.81. Looks like C. All right, and again, we could have done that with a table. Table is going to be a little bit more work. All right, it might be less thinking, but it is a little more work. We'd have Facebook. We'd have yes and no. We'd have Instagram. We'd have yes and no. And... Let's see, we're working with percents, so we could just say it's out of 100. All right, the total yes for Facebook would be 68. The total yes for Instagram would be 38. And then we were also told that the ones that use both would be 25. And then let's see, we could subtract here to get the 13. We could subtract here to get the 43. And you notice these are just the numbers on the table here. Um, 68 plus 32 is 100. 38 plus... Is that 62 is 100? And let's say 13 plus 19 equals 32. Yeah. So that would have been the, the outside number here would have been 19%. And then the ones that like both, or sorry, the ones that like or would be these guys here. And that does add up to 81%. All right, so tree diagrams or Venn diagrams or two-way tables. So... The Venn diagrams and two-way tables are basically interchangeable. So those two can go together. Tree diagrams, there is a special time when you have to use tree diagrams, and that's if the conditional probability changes something. So let's see what we're talking about here. So at a high school, 20% of seniors participate in athletics. Of the athletes, 30% take AP or yeah, take AP statistics. Of the non-athletes, 40% take AP statistics. So this is a conditional probability. So for athletes, it's one probability. For non-athletes, it's another probability. What is the probability of randomly selecting a senior who is an athlete given that they are taking statistics? All right, so the only way to organize this one is with the tree diagram, since the conditional probability changes. So as we draw off our branches here, so we've got athlete and we've got non-athlete. And let's see, 20% participate in athletics, so this would be 0.20 or 20%. And so that means the rest, the other 80% would be not athletes. The next set of branches, it's a conditional probability. So out of these 20%, uh, of the athletes, 30% take AP statistics. So 30% take stat. And that means 70% would not be take stat. All right. And now there was a different condition over here for stat and not stat. All right. So let's see, over here, 40% of the non-athletes take AP stat. So here's the stat branch. So this would be a 40%. So that means 60% would not take AP stat. All right. What is the probability of randomly selecting a senior who is an athlete given that they are taking AP stats? So these people are taking AP stats and these people are taking stats. And we want to know what's the probability that they are seniors. So that's the top one here out of the total here, both of those. So we need to get the end of these branches. To get to the end, we multiply them. 0 0.2 times 0 0.3, 0 0.06. 0 0.2 times 0.7. 0.14. Notice this 0.14 and 0.06 add up to this 20% here. Next branch, we've got 0.80 times 0.40 is 0 0.32. 0 0.80 times 0.60 is 0 0.48. Notice these two numbers do add up to 0 0.80. 0 
So we want these ones and these ones are the ones that are taking stat. So the probability of taking, let's see, probably who is an athlete given that they are taking stat? So we want to know what's probably the athlete given that they are taking stat. So we can use the formula here. So on the bottom, it's the probability that they are taking stat. On the top, it's the probability that they are an athlete and taking stat. All right, so athlete and stat is the 0 0.06. All right, just taking stat is these two together. So that's 0 0.06 plus 0.32. So we get 0 0.06 over 0.38, which we can write as 6 over 38 if we want or leave as that. That's fine. Either one of these answers is okay. We can simplify that if we want. We can change it to a decimal if we want. Any of these are perfectly fine, guys. And I believe this is the last example here. So at a business, 30% of the employees are over 50 years old. Of those over 50, 80% have supplemental insurance. Of those not over 50, 40% have supplemental insurance. So the probability is different depending on their age. That means we're going to have to organize this as a tree diagram. Given that someone has supplemental insurance, what is the probability that they are over 50? So we want the probability that they are 50 plus given that they have supplemental insurance. All right, so again, we can use the formula. It's going to be the probability that they have supplemental insurance on the bottom, and on the top would be the intersection, 50 plus and the supplemental insurance. So let's try and organize this now with a tree diagram. So the first branch was we talked about was if they were over 50 years old. So 50 plus, less than 50. I don't know, that's just one way I can write it, I guess. 30% uh, or over 50. So 30% go this way. That means the rest of them, 70% go this way. All right, next branch. Do we have supplemental insurance? So I've already said that that's SUP. And no, they don't. So we'll call this SUP. And we'll call this no. Right. You can write whatever you want. You can write out the full words if you want. You can just use the letter S if you want. As, as long as you can keep this under, like, easy enough that you can understand it, it's fine. So of those over 50, 80% have supplemental insurance. So this is an 80. That means this is 20. Of those not over 50, 40% have supplemental insurance. So this is a 40%. This would then be 60%. So 3 times 0 0.8 is 0.24. 3 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.06. These two do add up to 0 0.30. 0 0.70 and 0.24 is point, sorry, 0.4 is 0 0.28. 0 0.70 and 0.60 is 0 0.42. These two do add up to 0 0.70. Now, we want the supplemental insurance ones. That's these guys and these guys. That's our bottom. And on top is the both of them. So the both of them is this one here. Right, 50 plus and the supplement. So 0.24 goes on top. 0.24 plus 0.28 goes on the bottom. So we get 0.24 over, let's see, that was at 0.52, which gives us 24 out of 52. And then they want it as a decimal. So we could just go ahead and divide 24 divided by 52. I believe that's going to give us 46% or 0.46. You could just throw that in your calculator. You could also throw it in the calculator at this step right here, and that'd be fine with the decimals. All right, so that is how we can use Venn diagrams and how to tell between Venn diagrams and tree diagrams. The next section, we're going to throw independence into the mix. Remember, we went over that in class. It's tricky.